Yo yeah guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. It's episode number... Hmm... 67. <laughs> Sorry about the last two. Uh, yeah, 67 today, and we have indeed got Roma in the first leg of the Tim Cup semi-final. First time we've reached this stage, and also Milan at home in the Serie A in two massive games in domestic football. Before we get to games though, shall I brush me getting on off camera? And of course, in the last episode, you saw our big 2-1 defeat at home to Roma as we lost our lead at the top of the table, but then a bounce back win against Napoli in the Tim Cup quarterfinal by three goals to one. Uh, two games off camera, both in this area, but that inconsistent run of form continued. One win and one defeat, starting off with a victory away against Sampdoria by four goals to nil. Uh, three goals in 18 minutes in this one. First, Franchi heading in a free kick for Bacardi, made it 2-0 with one of his first goals of the season. I haven't scored in a long time since that one, uh, made Making it 2 0 connected with a free ball. Esposito made it 3 2 minutes later, and then a minute after the restart, Claudio wrapped up the game to make it 4 0. He's been in great form lately as we collected a very big three points there. But following that, I probably should have done this one on camera because once again, we faced our bogey team, and once again, they beat us. Lost against Udinese at home by two goals to one. Andre Anderson gave us the lead 22 minutes in. And I was thinking, come on, we're better than these guys. We know we're better than these guys, but in the second half, we just... We just, we just seem to have a meltdown against them every time we played them. First Suarez uh, making it 1-1 with 21 minutes to go. Lovely little step inside from the left. And then Pellegrini surrendering a penalty late on. He's already given away so many penalties this season. Uh, saw uh, Suarez make it 2-1 right towards the end of the game as they got themselves the three points coming from behind to claim them. And the significance of that loss is this. We blew our chance to return to top of the table. I believe a draw would have been good enough because Roma lost against Juventus away in Turin but instead due to that defeat there we remain behind them by a point. Napoli now have cut the gap on Roma to just four and three on us and Juve themselves are back in it as are Udinese after their win against us as well only eight points behind league leaders Roma with 15 games to go. Really anyone in the top six even Inter who are 10 points behind right now has still got a genuine shot at winning the title. Several teams going for the crown. Who's your Money on. And as we are now in February, nothing to report on transfer deadline day or in the remainder of January. As you saw in the last episode, Storari will be leaving at the end of the season to join the French side Dijon. That's the only bit of movement that happened in the window. So as we get into the Tim Cup semi-final, first leg here at the Bentegoli against Roma. Never reached this stage before. Super excited for it. We've got some tough, tough games coming in a very short span of time. Match sharpness, conditioning, and also, squad rotation is going to be really important during this period. Tends to the game. As you can see, Pascucci's still down with a broken lower leg. We won't see him again for a long time. Borelli's also gone down as well. Though we've barely played him this season. Is he's out of contract. This is our team. 4-2-3-1 control possession style to play with Moller in goal. And about four of you in Pellegrini. Sistana, Armini, Barbieri. With Mergia coming in alongside Gavoni. Salcedo on the left. Picardi on the right. And supporting Esposito up top. And on the bench, Aldero, Perola, Bastoni, Muri, De Paoli, De Sisto, Rigora, Storaro, Vivi. Gianni Del Monte, Franchi and Simonetti as well. First of two, it's our first ever semi-final in the Tim Cup. First leg here, Forza Brescia. Obviously, the Tim Cup is my lowest priority. Always has been, always will be, but I'd love to reach the final for the first time in the save and a genuine shot to do it this year. However, if you were to ask me, you know, fourth straight Serie A title or Tim Cup for the first time, I'd still choose the Serie A. We could be going for our fourth or 40th. I'd still choose the league. I always prioritise the league over the cup in football manager. And a Sebastiano, with a wonderful bit of the dribbling is through, he hits it straight at the Spaniard and it's still 0-0. And I've always been that way as well. I, I don't know why exactly, but I've literally always seen the league as, I wouldn't say far more important, but, you know, noticeably more important than the cup. In any league I'm managing in as, oh, that shot goes just over the bar there and it's still 0-0. Yeah, any league I'm managing in, you know, any any save I'm doing, league one, cup two or three. That's always how I see it. Riccardi, free kick for Roma, and oh, that man, Barsotti, with a golden chance there, and at six foot five, you know it's hard to stop him in the air. Heads it straight at Marco as it's still nil nil. Second half to begin, say nothing to the boys at the break, and as things stand, a goalish draw in the first leg. I think I'd take it heading back to the Stadio Olimpico. This will do me fine. Still free kick for Roma, and it have been a better team in this game, and. Oh, it's a goal, and it's that man, Barsotti, who's got it. 
But I have to say, he's very fortunate to claim it as Roma take the lead through a huge helping of like Riccardi's free kick, flicked on, and this shot takes a massive deflection off someone and goes past Marco Moller, who was diving the other way. Just one of those things, can't help it. Luck will balance itself out. I'm not going to complain too much. Sometimes those moments will go in your favour, sometimes they'll go against you. Just one of those things. We have been quite unlucky this season when you think about it. Some of the goals we conceded, we've conceded a lot of penalties as well. Some given through VAR. In fact, a lot given through VAR. And uh, also as well, the injuries we've had to deal with have been mounting up all throughout the course of the year. Anyway, that's going to do it. And I think five minutes of added time, but Roma are going to come to the Bentegotti and once again, for the second time in just a few weeks, beat us by a single goal. Second leg of the Stadio Olimpico still in it, but our problem against these guys, we're just not creating enough. You know, we're just not really assertive enough against these guys. And it's really surprising as well. When you think about how good our attack is, especially with Esbozito up top as well, we should be doing more. But instead, Roma, top of the table still by a point. 90 minutes away from a place in the Tim Cup final as well. You know, I talked about it. I said, we are the best team in Italy. I wonder if our reign is coming to an end. Not by Juve, not by Inter, but by Roma. And so, with our second and final game today coming here against Milan, Roma at home to Parma tomorrow afternoon. So, we have a chance to go top of the table if only for 24 hours here, if we can beat Milan here at the Benzagotti. I, again, I can't work it out. I think we will stay in second, even if we are level on points, but we might not be. I honestly can't remember where it goes goal, head-to-head, uh, head-to-head -head, head -head goal difference then head-to-head -head goal scored, or it just goes to goal difference and not head-to-head -head goal scored. I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out if we draw this game, though. But uh, a win, and we definitely will be going top of the table. So we'll stick with the 4-2-3-1, because I do like this system. I really, really do. And a lot of changes from the loss there against Roma. Or Dero comes back between the sticks, and the back four is now Muri, Bastoni, Armini, Napoli, with Rigor and Gavoni through the middle. Franchi comes back in on the left-hand side. Picardi's on the right, and supports Esposito. And up top, uh, on the bench, sorry, Mola, Perola, Sistana, Pellegrini, Barbieri, De Sisto, Magia, Storaro, Viani, Del Monte, Salcedo, and Simonetti as well. Second and final game. The rough patch is continuing, but for how much longer? Hopefully not here. Forza Brescia. Yeah, back-to-back -back defeats. Three losses in our last four games in all competitions as well. It is safe to say we are struggling at the moment. And as I always say, it will happen every single season in Football Manager. But this is not the time for us to be struggling. You know, huge, huge, huge game here. And actually, I can see on the right-hand side there, in fact, it does mean if we draw this game, we will leapfrog Roma on goal difference. So they're, they're head -to -head goal they're the head-to-head goal scored doesn't come into play then. So it's head-to-head, -head, head to head goal difference, and then goal difference afterwards. So that, that means that the uh, the loss we had at the Bentagotti is not as bad as it possibly could have been as Esposito heads over, and already Franchi is forced off. God damn it, the injuries keep m uh, mounting up. We have had so much bad luck this season, man, honestly. The amount of injuries that have come our way is just extraordinary. Franchi doesn't last the first five minutes. There's a double injury as well because Suzo has been forced off. But was that the same time? Probably not. Either way, 15 minutes in, still 0-0. Come on, Brescia. We need to win this game here. No way. They're playing Wilfred and Didi at right back. I just noticed that. That's crazy. As the Pauli's going to whip in a corner to the middle. And there is Ndidi heading it clear, but straight to Andre Anderson, who picks it up. Chance remains alive. Oh, what a save by Donnarumma. Fantastic flying save by the number 99. Sebastiano flicks it on. Brilliant stop by Italy's number one, and it is still nil-nil. Brilliant save. Salcedo to Pauli. Oh, it's a goal, though. It's a goal straight afterwards. Fabio gives us the lead. His first of the year. He's been brilliant this season, and finally notches for the first time. Chance remained a lider. I thought Milan were going to get the danger fully clear after the corner. They did not, and as we kept the ch chance alive, Salcedo plays a brilliant through ball to find De Pauli, threads the needle, and puts it past Donnarumma. 1-0 Brescia. I said it before and I'll say it again, the fact this guy has never been called up to the Italy squad is absolutely criminal. He'll be turning 29 in April and it is a joke. He never once got called up for the squad and he probably never will. Lazari is now in his 30s and a backup right back at RB Leipzig. Yes, there's Dabi Calabria who's right now the best right back in Italy, but De Paoli should be in this squad at least once, but still half time, dominating possession, forget about that. Fabio might have been called up for the country, but he's always doing his best job for the club. We've been in control, saying nothing to the boys at the break. Second half to begin, 45 minutes away from going top by two. 
That means that if Roma don't match our result tomorrow against Palma, which they should do really, then we'll stay top of the table with 14 games to go. But as Rafael Liao is through, oh, what a huge miss. He wouldn't miss that in a Nottingham Forest shirt, would he? Fires it way wide as we still remain leading by a goal. He is normally so, so deadly. But half an hour remaining, Milan coming out of the gates flying. Can we hold on to a big three points here? Need this. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, Alcedo makes it two. And it's just one of those games where Fabio elevates his game, gets the first goal, sets up the second for Salcedo as well. Second goal in four or five games, I think, for streaky Salcedo, who so often goes missing. Had been for a long time, but back on the score sheet here in a massive game. Heads in the cross, 2-0 pressure, 33 minutes to go. I think, uh, 30, uh, sorry, 27 minutes to go. Wow, that's bad maths there. I think we'll be okay. Corner, Fabio De Paoli. Crosses one in. Oh, yeah. He's just one of those games, man. One of those games. He just, you know, I get he doesn't do it on a consistent basis, but he's consistently good. And then every now and then, he's just absolutely sublime. A goal and now two assists for our right back. Armini, the club captain, rises highest, gets his first of the year and puts us 3-0 up. And in a big statement game, we have made a big statement ourselves. 3-0, points in the bag. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I am talking about. We needed this. We needed this. Do you know what? If we do go out to Tim Cup, as Esbozito has the power, he's crossed over and we probably should have had there a fourth goal. If we do go out to Tim Cup and lose in the second leg to Roma... Fine. They can add a Tim Cup. I don't mind. Go through to the final. Fine. So long as we win this area. I care much more about the lead than I do about the Cup, and that will always be the case. Claudio receives the goal kick from Donnarumma and storms down the right. Beats Torre and leaves him on the floor. Back to Fabio looking for a hat-trick of assists. He'll play a 1-2 with Claudio. Whip one in. Headed away. And Orsolini will clear. Come on, let's get a fourth. Let's get a fourth. Great ball by Armini. De Paoli... Oh, and again, it should have been a hat-trick of assist for Fabio today. He's been unstoppable down that right-hand side. That'll do it, though. That'll do it. Brescia are going to get the win. Return to winning ways in a big, big, big way. 3 the final score. And even if we're only top for 24 hours, we put the pressure on Roma once again. Great stuff. Very pleased with the result and your performance. And, yep, there you go. Brescia go top of the Serie A. But fucking hell. The injuries this season. Absolutely unbelievable how many we've had at different stages as well. Franchi now will sprain knee ligaments for five to six weeks, which means that he's going to miss, I think, both legs against Galatasaray. Just as he was starting to come good, now he's stopped in his tracks due to injury. That is typical my luck on FM. Actually, John, it's not. It, it's not. Actually, I, I'm going to retract that. It's not. Because, to be fair, I, I will be honest here, I often do get quite fortunate with injuries. Every now and then, there's like one season where it all goes wrong, and this is that season. But oftentimes... No, I, I actually do get quite fortunate at keeping my squad relatively, I wouldn't say injury-free, but healthy and fit for the most part. So, no, to be fair, this is just one of those seasons. I shouldn't complain that much because sometimes I do get the luck. I am, like, the fairest FM player ever, man, honestly. Like, I will always hold my hands up and admit when I've had luck, and I'll always just call things very fairly and say when sometimes things haven't gone my way, but it's just one of those things. I can't be fair, I can't I? But uh, still, we'll see what happens then in the Roma game. I think they'll win pretty convincingly against Parma, and they didn't win convincingly, but they did win. One in the final score at the Stadio Olympico there, but Fiorentina went to the Stadio San Paolo and scored two late goals. Huge defeat there for Napoli as Inter beat Genoa, and uh, there you go so we'll end the episode there then and as you can see right now with the top five all playing 24 times in fact we'll play we'll press through the Udinese game as well against Hellas Verona and uh, end it after there as they were by three goals to one and as you can see then the top six have all played 24 games and there are only 10 points separating the teams that is remarkable. We're one point behind Roma. We're five clear of Juve. But don't think that these teams here are out of the title race. Absolutely not. 14 games to go. And it's still very tight indeed. But that was this episode of Club and Country, guys. A big thank you for watching. We hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And in the very next episode, we've got to do it. We're coming back with a triple header. Juve away in Turin. A massive game in the Serie A. The first leg against Galatasaray. And then we'll wrap up with Roma away at the Stadio Olimpico playing three games in three different competitions. Have a great day guys, much love and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country, one of the biggest episodes of this series very soon.